So far in this section, we have refactored our application code into multiple modules. We have a shared module, a core module, and two feature modules. This makes our application code cleaner, maintainable, and more collaborative. Different developers can work on different modules independently. However, this does not improve the performance of our Angular application. So now, let's talk about optimizing our Angular application for a better performance. Now, whenever we run our Angular application, it loads the modules and all the components, directives, pipes, etc. declared in those modules. So, Angular offers two main strategies for loading application module, eager loading and lazy loading. In this lecture, we are going to understand both of these strategies and when we should use one over the other. In eager loading, all modules listed in the imports array of the app module are loaded synchronously during the application startup. So for example, when we will run this Angular application, in the app module, you will see that we have some imports. We are importing the browser module. We are importing the HTTP client module. We are importing the router module, the dashboard module, core module, and auth module. So when this Angular application will run, all these modules will be loaded at that time only. All these modules will be loaded at once. And with these modules, the components, directives, pipes, etc., which we have defined within these modules, they will also get loaded at the same time. Okay, so in eager loading, all the modules listed in the imports array of the app module are loaded synchronously during the application startup. And eager loading is the default behavior in Angular. This means that all the components, directives, services, and pipes defined within those modules are available immediately. Everything is loaded at once when the Angular application runs. Let's try to understand eager loading with an example. So let's say in our Angular application, currently we have three modules. We have the app module, we have the dashboard module, and we have login module. Actually, it is auth module. Okay, so when we type the root URL in the address bar, at that time, we are showing the header component, the home component, and the footer component. So all these three components are present inside this app module. Now, when we go to root URL slash dashboard, at that time, we are displaying the dashboard component. And when we go to root URL slash login, at that time, we are displaying the login component. So currently in our Angular application, we have two feature modules and one main module. Now, when this Angular application will start, at that time, all these modules will be loaded at once. And with that, all the components, directives, and pipes declared inside those modules will also get loaded. So, when the application runs for the first time, at that time only, all these modules and their respective components, directives, pipes, etc. gets loaded in the browser. The benefit of eager loading is that it is simple to implement, especially when we are working with small projects. And also, components from any module are readily available for use throughout the application. But the drawback is, in case of eager loading, the bundle files which gets generated, like the main.js, vendor.js, so these files which gets generated when we compile our Angular application, their size is quite large. And this can lead to the slower initial load time for large applications. And to overcome these drawbacks, what we can do is we can make our Angular application load lazily. So let's try to understand what is lazy loading. Lazy loading allows you to load modules asynchronously only when the user navigates to a route associated with that module. So when the Angular application starts for the first time, it will only load the main module. And in our Angular application, the main module is app module. So when the Angular application starts for the first time, it will load only the app module. The feature modules will not get loaded. Then once the user navigates to another route, only then the related module to that route will be loaded. So for example, initially when our Angular application will start, at that time, app module will be loaded. And in the app module, we have home component, header component, and footer component. So those components will be loaded. Now when we move to dashboard route by typing root url slash dashboard in the address bar at that time only the dashboard module will be loaded when we go to login route at that time only the auth module will be loaded okay 
and this optimizes the initial load time by deferring the loading of less frequently used features. Let's again try to understand this lazy loading with an example. So again, in our Angular application, if we implement lazy loading at that time, what will happen is when we run our Angular application, first the main module, which is the app module, it will get loaded. Here you notice that dashboard module and auth module are not yet loaded. Only the app module has been loaded. Now, when the user tries to navigate to root URL slash dashboard to this URL, this URL is linked to dashboard module. So when the user navigates to this URL, at that time only, the dashboard module will be loaded. And when the user navigates to slash login URL, at that time only, this auth module will be loaded. And all the components and directives and related building blocks will be loaded. So this is what lazy loading means. In case of lazy loading, all the feature modules does not get loaded at once. They get loaded only when the user navigates to the route associated with that module. Now, the benefit of lazy loading is that it has smaller initial bundle size, which leads to faster initial load times. Your application will be loaded quite fast. And it also improves perceived performance by loading features only when needed. Now, the drawback is it requires additional configuration for routes and lazy loading. And there might be a slight delay when a lazy loaded module is first accessed. And we will understand these two drawbacks in our next lecture. So this was a very high level overview of what is eager loading and what is lazy loading of modules in Angular and which approach provides what benefits and what drawbacks. Now, in order to decide when to use eager loading and when to use lazy loading, it completely depends on the size of your application. So in your application, if you have one or two modules, then you can go with eager loading. In that case, lazy loading is not required. But if you are creating very large application where you have many modules, let's say 10, 15 modules, and each module has a lot of components and directives declared there, in that case, it's better to go with lazy loading approach. Because for such applications, the lazy loading approach will reduce the initial load time of the application. All right, so this is all from this lecture. In the next lecture, let's learn how we can implement lazy loading in our Angular application.